Dave here, how are you? Today is, and I'm reading down here because I'm old and I forget, today is the 9th of December 2018 in Australia, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I hope everyone's well and you've had a good week. Uh, on the show today, on the show today, we've got a few things and we also have a guest coming in a little bit later on and that is Zoe. She is my 13 year old granddaughter and she has developed a fascination or an interest, let's say an interest at this stage, but loves woodworking. Uh, wish she could do it next year, but apparently the school curriculum will not allow her to do that. She has to do it in year seven as a curriculum or as a uh, compulsory. And then she can select to do it in year nine if she wishes. So reading through the chat list for today or for the list on what's happening on the show, get it right, Dave. Triton Belt Sander giveaway. So it's this bad boy here. This I will be giving away, not this particular one, it'll be a brand new one in a box uh, for Australian residents only. It can't happen in New Zealand, it's totally by Triton Australia and they very generously said that they'd love to do this with us and we might be doing a few more as well further down the track, uh, maybe once every few months. So it's great to have Triton on board as a show sponsor, it'd be terrific. Uh, I'll go through this machine a little bit later on as well and we can have a bit of a chat about the features of it and why I like it. Uh, the Torcata flat top blade, I'll also be going through that. This is, uh, it's an amazing blade. It does beautiful, beautiful flat cuts at six millimeters. What I've done also in the description box below where it says show more below this particular screen, if you're watching on a TV, um, I'm going to do a little bit more reading in a second, but uh, for box joints, this has got a dead flat base. It's six millimeters in Australia, but as I was saying, in the description box below, you will see that I've put a link to another one that looks identical to it, but it says it's a quarter of an inch wide. Now, I haven't put the calipers on mine to check whether it's six millimeters or a quarter, but I don't see why it would say six millimeters when it's not 6.35 millimeters. So you get the drift. Anyway, there's a link down there for the states. If you use that link, link the show will benefit from it. So please have a think about whether or not you want to jump in through a link to get to Amazon through the show or, or whether you want to do it for another YouTuber that might be one of your favorites. Okay, next thing, next thing, deliveries of the Stanton bench going out next week. This is very exciting. Apart from the challenge of packing this thing, uh, actually having it finished and ready to go, waiting for the courier who's picking it up on Monday. It's, it's such a blast. It, it's, a, it's a whole new venture. Um, I've been making the benches for a while and I'm really happy about the way that they're coming up and for people to take the confidence in the product that I'm creating and uh, saying, Dave, <laughs> send me one. Uh, and in the States, they start getting produced next week as well. So hopefully we'll get a fair few out before Christmas. If you're interested, jump in and uh, send me an email, uh, dave at stantonbench.com.au. Easy. And that's for you guys in the States as well, or for anywhere, um, New Zealand, same kind of thing. Canada, we'll also service Canada. Now, I'm hoping that the sound is coming through beautifully and that the image is fine. And uh, we've got all the text down the side there. I shall put the other uh, one up that has the main camera, the text in the side there, and it should be large enough for you to read. And also there's an image of my table saw. Now I cut a new, brand new insert plate for it this morning because I'm gonna raise that Torcata blade up through it. And if you're interested, let me see if I've got a picture of it here. I've got a comparison picture of the Torcata, which is on the left-hand side, the box joint blade, and the CMT dado stack on the right-hand side. So I raised that Torcata blade up through the 5 8 insert plate that I had. And uh, I'll tell you what, it is a huge difference. Now they're different purpose blades. The CMT is designed to have a super crisp edge. The bottom of the trench, they don't really care about. But if you're doing box joints, I really do recommend this blade. I've had a little bit of a play around with it. And it's absolutely fantastic. Thanks, John, for letting me know that the uh, sound is good. Uh, image and sound are okay, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. So what do you think? What do you think about that? I'll see if I've got another picture of it there. Oh, look, let's talk about the Torcata blade now at the moment while I've got it. This is a picture from above while the blade is in my saw. Now, the top of the blade, the, the cutters are dead flat, but you will notice that there is a bit of an angle on them so that as they're approaching the timber, 
it's a slice it's not a chop so that is very very good it uh, it just delivers such a clean cut and they've left plenty of meat on the blade on the on the cutters for it to be ground again if you need it to be and also just behind the blades are an anti-kickback um, limiter so it's it's pretty good with a uh, with a standard blade you know that you can use a I'm switching back over here standard blade you know that you can use a riving knife with it uh, with this one I don't have a riving knife that's that thick but the thing is with a blade like this you're not designed it's not designed to go all the way through the timber it's to create a dado a rebate you guys in the states obviously call it a rabbit um, and also for box joints if you're doing box joints with it I would suggest you uh, put a sacrificial piece of timber in behind if you're using it on a, on a miter slate. But uh, let me jump out of here for the moment and we'll jump, God, I'm saying jump and jump all over the place. What's the story here? I'm going to go to the close up cam and me here. And let's actually put the blade in and I'll switch this, the transition. I always forget to do that part. Okay, so I'm going to jump over there and get that happening so I can't see what's happening over there but I'm waving here and I'm going to grab the blade that's what it looks like if you go into a store to get it in Australia you can get these at Timbercon and I think also Carbotech are wanting to get a hold of these as well so it's an 8 inch blade so it's fine to go in my 10 inch table saw it's the same size as a dado stack uh, because basically it is a dado blade but you know narrower all right this is the brand new insert that i made this morning forgive down the end there it's a nice tight fit and i've super glued some magnets in there so that it's not going to go anywhere i've got the uh the trunnion raised all the way to the top and i'm putting the blade in it shows you the rotation direction up tight there and what else have i got here the flange I'll put the flange on as well and I'll also put the nut on. Now with the nuts you don't really need to tighten them up too much. I'll put the spanner on. I could, I could, uh, no I won't do that. I was going to suggest you can actually turn the blade and not worry about using the spanner but I only give it a very very light nip. The reason that I don't tighten the, the uh, spanner up a lot or tighten that up a lot is because tighten the bolt up or the nut I should say I'm getting a bit lost there um, is because when the saw starts it actually the, the nut's sitting stationary and the, the the arbor turns inside the nut towards tightening so that's why you don't need to worry about that I'll lower the blade down there is no blade guard on it because I'm going to be using it as a dado put the insert back in the right way up David now, ordinarily, I would bring this, this over the top as well. And I think I will still, I've got a mark on here where the center of the blade, oh, sorry, it's here. That's where the center of the blade is. So I've got an indicator. So I know where to bring this across to. And that will do me there. I put that on there so it's an extra support to hold that down just in case the blade decides it wants to go crazy. Give me a second. I'll have a quick look at something else I'm going to do here. <clears throat> I'm not 100% organized this morning, but I will get there done. I've just shared uh, this show to Instagram as well because I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing to, to look at today. All right, I'm going to turn on the dust extraction. Not that it's going to need it a lot here. I'll make sure I've got the right one open because I was using the router table earlier. Close that off, open up the table saw, and turn the dusty on. This is very exciting. Here we go. I'm going to turn the saw on now, and raise the blade up through the stack, or through the uh, insert. Here it's starting to cut. Stop it there and lower it down a little bit. 
wait for it to stop. Now my saw takes a long time to stop. There we go. All right, I'm gonna take this out and you can have a look, if my hand would stay still, at how good that cut is. I'm gonna put it across there I don't know if that's coming up neat on the um, image or not. I'm going to lower that all the way down so it's out of the way. Come back around to the other camera here. All right, where are we up to? That one there and that one there. All right, switch it over as well. All right, well, I'm going to have a quick read here. Uh, John Wheel, a great reception, good. Paul Angus, morning day, a little late this morning. Off to the corner, yes, off you go. Uh, great to know, John, but um, everyone behaving. Uh, does look like it for a moment. I'm trying to catch up on all the conversation here. Uh, from Latvia, I don't think I've ever had a viewer from Latvia. So welcome there. Bakarads, is, is that how you pronounce the name? Bakarods, Bakarads? Let me know, could you use mag switches to hold the insert down? Possibly could, but I have already got mag, um, rare earth magnets here that are also locking it down. So let me see. I'm again losing the thing with the camera here. There's a rare earth magnet there and another one there. They're not a, a lot of holding power, but they do do the job. Let's go to Carl Cam up there and we'll see if we can see it a little bit better there. Maybe, maybe not. You know, the only problem with Carl Camp is that when it's um, fo focusing, it's looking for a high contrast, and I'm trying to rotate all over the place here at the same time. Ah, if I put it right up there, how's that going to work? There you go. That's nice and crisp. Excellent. All right. The cut is fantastic. Uh, nice clean lines across the slot. Indeed it is. Very impressive. John, we all need to be on the same page. What happens? Um, okay. Uh, pretty close. Uh, <laughs> thanks, that's from Latvia. I uh, love to watch your shows from time to time. Thank you. Hi all. Camera seems to be focusing very quickly and accurately today. Excellent. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, Dave, yeah, you don't use a domino at the I don't use the domino anymore. Yeah, I do use the domino. I use the domino a heap, but uh, it's just a lot of things you don't see. I'll switch back over to this main cam again and transition. All right, how are we doing? Quarter past 11, so we're doing quite well. So look, that blade, I've been looking around for a flat top blade for years and years and years, and I've had a lot of customers when I'm at the store at Carver Tech when they come in, they say, Dave, I'm after a flat top blade. And the closest thing I've been able to get for them is a rip blade. And the rip blades still leave that little, it's, it's got a flat chisel and it's got a little peak in the center. Every second tooth has a different profile. So it's not, it's not dead flat. But this thing, I, I'm glad I found it. And I'm glad I got in touch with, the company, with Timbercon. They flicked one out to me. And so that information I can share off to you guys. As I said, I had a look around on Amazon as to where I could get one in the States for, for you guys in the States, if, if you're watching my show, and link there as well. Next thing, Triton Belt Sander giveaway. Now let's have a look at the sander. It's one of the good features I like about this sander is that there is nothing down the side here, which means I can push this right into a corner. So I can sand right up to an edge. If I've got, if I had a piece of timber there, let's say one of these inserts is there. See that? There we go. That is hard on the deck. I'd be able to get right through and up to the corner. If I've got a whole heap of glue or something, I want to get out of there. This bad boy would do it for me. Uh, the handle has got a little guy at the front here. I can flick that down and I can put it any position I want and then lock it back into position. So if I'm mounting the thing upside down on a bench, the handle's out of the way. I can use the front nose here for if I want to do any sanding as a profile. If I don't have a bobbin sander, I could use this. Uh, what else about it? It takes all sorts of different grits. 
it has a tracking adjustment here so I can turn that to adjust the angle of this front roller which means that the belts always try and track to the highest point on a roller so if I had it shaped this way it's wanting to go back towards the machine if I had it shaped out this direction it would want to climb off the side of the machine which yeah probably not a good idea um, give me a second I'm gonna have a quick read down through here um, Dens Bush pig good day Dave how are you Dens uh, okay oh at the end anymore uh, not sure I quite follow on that one Marcus Jane Coggins hi Dave you know, Jane here from Wales in the UK uh, I'm guessing it's around about a quarter past midnight in the morning where you are uh, let me see what with the next question I mean for the zero clearance plate uh, all right I see what you mean yeah so that clearance zero clearance plate that I made for the domino last week it's it's great I don't know if I've got the domino kicking around here at the moment it probably is I've, yeah it's down the other end of the, of the workshop I'll get it a little bit later on maybe and have a quick look um, Jane the uh, I think you got your caps lock on uh, Ken how would you mount it to the bench when it's upside down okay good question good question let me see it comes whoop, it can't, doesn't come with that washer but it comes with some other things what I've done these are their mounts now they were they were a little bit longer than that and I trimmed them down now it has a um, butterfly nut here and I've been using a washer also with the butterfly nut which straddles the 20 millimeter hole in the bench and you'll notice there's a bit of an angle it's not dead 90 degrees it tapers down probably around about 86 degrees there and that's on purpose as you pull the tension up it will go straight uh, one thing I did notice is that if you put too much pressure on them on one side it will roll the sander over and one of the reasons that is is because on the top here it's very user-friendly in, in design here so if it's probably a little bit of a fault if it was me I'd probably make these come out wider so it's a whole lot more support so that the sander can't roll but I think they're thinking their Triton's way of thinking is that the sander is probably going to be used more in a situation handheld more than in a bench situation but if you're thinking about getting a sander and thinking about getting a belt sander pardon me like a, a workshop mounted belt sander this might be a better option for you as I say I can put this in here I think and that one as well maybe over here let's see how this goes and there's a couple of holes see up the top here there's a couple of holes there and it's always difficult when you're working with a with an audience watching and trying to get it uh, not that hole maybe another one uh, because I have to swing it around till it picks up a, one of those holes I'm going to move it again possibly to this one one of the great things about this bench is I've got so much versatility slide that in there actually I'm going to go to that one back that one there the reason being the front of the bench has got double thickness and then around this way there we go I think I've got it yep okay so now I can tighten that up and it's it's going to hold on to it so I'm picking the bench up so that'll work quite well and then I can turn it so it's going to be turning this way towards me or I could turn the whole machine around the other direction so it's turning away from me variable speed on it uh, it came with a spare belt for uh, the drive belt I don't know why but it did came with a dust collection bag I've used I've jerried up something to hook it up to my uh, Festool vac and also it has one of these guys which when it's upside down you can mount uh, back there so a piece of timber doesn't just go flying off and uh, cause you an injury one important thing with these and that is 
the uh, don't leave them locked on, turned on. I'll tell you why. If you leave it turned on, these things are like a tank, but they are very, very fast. That belt turns at a very fast rate. And if you were to have this on the bench and be slack, like I did about 40 years ago, actually it was about 35 years ago, it wasn't plugged in. This was turned on and the lock was on. I plugged it in at one of the places I worked at and the thing took off. And back then I had a Great Dane. And unfortunately, she was sitting right in front of the path and this thing smacked a fair in the head. It just flew straight off the bench. Um, she was very wary after that. But anyway, that's, as I say, that's a tip. Don't leave machines turned on because a lot of people, I know we're not supposed to plug things in after the fact, but we do it. That's all there is to it. Okay, I'm going to have a quick read. Uh, is the Triton a 75 millimeter belt? I think it is. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a three inch machine. The length of the belt, I, look, I, I'm reading on the side. You know what? You're spot on, 533 millimeters. Uh, next thing, uh, whoops, cap lock, yep. Um, Chad, no pressure, Dave, no, not a problem, Chad. Jim, Dave, someday do you demo the mag switch feather boards? Are they reliable? Yes, I have already done that. I did the uh, mag switch feather board, I did the Craig feather board, and I did a little cheapy one as well. And I went through the whole lot. Have a look back through my videos, just where on the channel, instead of the main channel, just click videos and they'll all start scrolling out uh, below you and away you go. Uh, where are we? Lost belt Santa races. Oh yeah, but only as long as the cord and then the power is gone. So if you want to cheat with a belt Santa race, you might get a 30 meter power cord. All right, so that machine is an absolute cracker and we are giving one away this week uh, and hopefully, let's say this is for Australia only, and hopefully uh, Triton will get it out the door ready to be delivered prior to Christmas. So today in Australia is the 9th, so it will be the 16th, I think, is that about right? Well, until the, the winner is drawn. And to enter, again, description box below, itchy eyebrow, that's weird. Uh, the description box below, go down through everything and, and you'll see the, the, the sweepstake. I call it a sweepstake because uh, sweepstakes in Australia are legal. Uh, giveaways, you have to be licensed and all that, you know, competitions you've got to be licensed for. But sweepstakes, apparently, they're fine. Uh, but this is international and I think those rules were written back in the early 1900s or the late 1800s. I don't know. Uh, now, competition, as I say, and Triton will get it out on this. I'll probably get it out on the 17th, and then we've got a, a, whole, a weekend before Christmas. So, you know, that's a busy time, but we'll do our best. Right, what's the next thing? Next thing, next thing. Triton Belt Sounder giveaway. Whoop, oh, sweepstake. Uh, we've had a look at the flat top blade, uh, the Stanton bench going out. I'm going to announce the winner of the eye muffs very soon. Uh, our girls interested in woodwork will be doing that very soon as well. Zoe will be here in a couple of minutes. And uh, as I say, support the channel through Patreon. And now we're going to have a quick look at uh, last week's winner of the eye muffs. And I'll need to find this. So uh, these are the eye muffs G6. Let's see if I can find a picture. Here we go. This is a draw made by Jeremy. Now, Jeremy was the guy who won the eye muffs and he sent me a little letter and this picture. So he says, uh, G'day Dave, thanks, that's great. This is after I told him he won. Uh, would have come in handy for installing the tracks on some drawers I made a while back. Long story, but I tried in vain to find someone to make six replacement drawers for a built-in wardrobe. After watching your show, I decided to do it myself and I'm pretty chuffed with the results. My grandfather was a cabinet maker, so there might be something in the blood. Thanks again and keep up the great work. Sincerely, Jeremy. Well, thanks a lot for that, Jeremy. And uh, I'd like to see a picture of you actually wearing the eye muffs. That'd be nice. Uh, what else we got? Oh, coming along as well, another giveaway. We've got actually one of our subscribers is donating something and it's something that he's actually made. Now, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'll let you know next week. And uh, he sent me a couple of things down as well. I'll tell you what. They're very, very nice. Out of timber. Uh, so I'm going to leave you guessing. Uh, okay. Jim, you've also got your caps lock on, buddy. You like the prize, do you, David? 
Yeah, I, it's a cracker. Uh, something for Australians only. <laughs> Pops Woodwork. That's great. Uh, now, let me see. What's the next thing? Look, I'm, I think I can hear Zoe coming around the corner now, so I will just open the door up for her. Give me a second. Hi there. Come on in. Okay, now... I'm going to change the microphone around a little bit. Now, this is Zoe. Now, she is granddaughter, I don't know what number. Grand, whoop, showing a bit of flesh. Number two. Number two. Okay, we'll drop that down there. Now, this is my wireless microphone, and I'm going to put it on a pencil. There we go. Now, that, now I can be a reporter and I can talk to Zoe. So, which granddaughter you it's number two number two okay so zoe uh, is believe it or not she's 13 and she's approaching six feet and has not stopped growing uh, so she loves playing netball and loves woodworking and uh, i'm going to say uh, here's the question zoe what size shoe do you wear i wear size 15 women's 12 men's that's <laughs> pretty big so we don't think she's finished growing yet anyway now uh what's this lost wit so glad i don't have the only family that number children and grandchildren yeah i got 11 so uh that's a lot now zoe has recently won a medal for something that she made at woodwork at school now she's in year seven <clears throat> and uh she's actually got it on the, the table in front of us and that's the back of it. It's a, it's a money box. Now, she had to go through all sorts of a process designing this, didn't you? Can you tell me from the beginning, when you were first, when your teacher first said you were okay, we're going to do a money box, what was the process? Did you have to use, did you draw it out or did you use software or, or talk me through the whole thing? Well, the first step in our process was to draw it out mm -hmm. and to figure out what type of wood and how much wood and stuff we're going to need for it. Yep. So first was drawing it out and gathering all the materials that we needed. Um, so was this out in the paddock or did they have in the storeroom? They um, have it in, a, in the woodwork room. So they okay. have all the woods and yeah, I chose four millimeter wood. Right. Yeah, okay. So it's a four millimeter plywood, is it? Yep. Okay. And so you drew it up and then did you use any software at all to, to design this? Uh, not with wood Not tech. in this, not with wood tech. Okay. And I can see on the back here, it's got layers of timber as well. Did you have to glue all these together or were they given to you like that? Um, they were given these, um, the, the square bit of it was given, yeah. given, it, um, given to us like that. Was it drilled out as well in the back there? Uh, yes, it was. Okay. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit closer so everyone can see it. So this is basically, so save your money and you can see how rich you're going to be because it's got a Perspex back. And then there's a whole heap of laminations of the timber. And is that radio out of pine, do you think? Um, yeah, I think so. Poor old Zoe, I put you on the spot there. You don't really know, do you? <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's the actual item. And you won first place out of the whole year with this. Yes, but it, it everyone in the year that was doing wood tech had to make one of these. Yes. Correct? Yep. What set yours aside to be the winner? Um, apart from you being very good at netball. <laughs> well, um, well, the I for me, I think it was that I had a lot of colour and that I had a lot of layers and because of this... Um, because of the little steps. Now, how did you cut all those steps out? Did you use a coping saw or something else? Uh, no, we used a... I can't remember what they're called. Scroll saw? Scroll saw, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and I had to... I So, I traced it out and then I like made it a little square so it'd be easier for me to um, keep holding on to it and not cut my finger on it. So, I would get the wood and chop it one way and then chop it the other and then keep going and okay. going and going. So. Okay. And then you cut that part out at the end, did you? Yeah. Okay. That's very clever. I wouldn't have thought of doing that. That's really good. 
Did you paint each one of these layers before you glued them to each other again, or did you use another way? Um, yes, I painted all of them before I glued up. Okay, glued them so on. just again there. So that's there's a lot of work in that, you know, and and for a kid in year seven that's never really had an interest in woodworking before in their life, I think that's pretty good. Uh, now, you were also telling me about a ring that you were making. Yes. Um, I've got a little bit of video here, so what we might do is we'll just throw this on and this is this is the silver ring project now talk me through this well first semester we were asked to design rings on this website called on shape um, so it was a website that you kind of well you designed it on yes um, it's very very hard to do it it was it was a good website um, <laughs> Um, it was, yeah, it was just very hard to get all the different Okay, pieces. now with this ring that's on the screen at the moment, yeah. you designed that up in the software and then you printed a 3D print of that particular ring. This yeah. particular one is not Zoe's, that's the one at one first place. Though you like to share first place around. We don't worry about that picture, we're just, the, this is a scrolling video that we did earlier, so it's just going to track through the other things that I saw on the exhibition night. You can watch what's happening with the other things that the kids made, but we're still talking about this. So it was a 3D, sorry, it was a, it was a three, sorry, um, plastic printed, mm -hmm. 3D printer. And then what happened to that print of the ring after you made it? After, after we made it in the 3D printer, we had to take it out and um, uh, file it and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we'd have to um, make sure it was just the, um, ring and there were no legs or anything on it yep. from the 3d printer okay. then we sent it off to get cast in silver yes and it came back like that and then we had to file the silver down so there were no chunks and stuff left on it so okay it so it was smooth. it was people friendly yeah that's lovely now watching pictures here see that plane sitting on the bandsaw zoe roused on me she said granddad don't ever put a plane down like that it's got to be on its side and then i was looking around the workshop and how cool is this these are all australian made stanley planes and uh, what are these guys? Um, they're the clamps that we use. Hold down clamps. Okay. And look, I was a little annoyed. Zoe's has won the thing, but it was off to the left-hand side. I thought it should have been at the front, but not to worry. There you go. That's that's the uh, a still that I took, uh, which is going to let you see a whole lot easier. And we'll go back to the main camera again. And I noticed there's a couple of comments there. Uh, I reckon that Zoe should get a granddad's bench. <laughs> Do you? Um, uh, yeah, so Zoe is still growing. Now, one of the things that we did when Zoe was two years old, we measured her and she was three foot one inch on her second birthday. So if you want to get an indicator, we reckon she's going to be six foot two when she's finished growing because double the age on their second birthday is, is a great, great indicator and it's worked. Like she just hasn't stopped. And... Uh, I reckon she might be able to walk on water later on which <laughs> with those feet. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's about it for that. So looking forward, Zoe, what, what kind of things do you want to do? Do you want to do anything more with woodworking when you get older or, or Definitely. not? Um, I, well, in year nine, when we get to choose wood tech as an elective again, I, um, we get to make these coat racks and chairs and stuff out of wood. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I think it'll be really cool just to I don't know um, just to design something and for it to be used in everyday I think that's a terrific stuff. idea yeah so I know it's only it's very early days and you know when people ask uh, kids what they want to be when they're older normally they say I want to be a fireman or a policeman or I want to be in IT uh, they, they look for a glamorous kind of thing but for someone that wants to get involved with woodworking I think is is uh, is great. Now, your dad does a lot of woodworking as well. Yeah. And obviously, Nan and I do a fair bit. Uh, so, do you think it's something that's possibly just in your in your blood, or do you think possibly it's something that you've watched dad doing stuff with woodwork and you thought, oh, and only recently, because I know that your big sister comes in here and she said, Granddad, I really don't want to be here. <laughs> so, uh, what do you reckon spurred you on to liking woodworking? Well, Dad never really forced it on me, like, when I was little, like, yep. never really showed it. It was kind of you. Whenever my brothers or sisters and I used to come over here, Grandad 
we used to go say hi to Grandad in his workshop, and it would kind of be this dreaded experience. The dreaded I'd tour, say, because <laughs> you'd go in there for about you go in there expecting to be about quick quick minute quick yep. kiss and hug and then you'd end up there for another two hours because he'd show you everything that he'd done and you never you, i didn't really understand that until i did my money box i understand now how proud you feel that you've done well thank you for this. that sorry that's wonderful <laughs> I'm getting a little bit misty <laughs> Um, look, I reckon the money box is fantastic. What other did you do? Any other woodwork projects during the year at all? I did. Um, I made a chopping board. Yes. Um, now I think I asked you earlier about the chopping board, whether it was a, a long grain or an end grain chopping board. It was an end grain chopping board. End grain chopping board. And uh, tell me why an end grain chopping board is better than an ordinary chopping board. An end grain chopping board is better. Um, because it doesn't blunt the knife as quick as a... Well done, well done. No, no uh, <laughs> coaching <why> no <laughs> coaxing from Grandad there at all on that. That's why cooks like to use it. Indeed, indeed. You're a very smart girl. <laughs> all right. Okay, so look, thank you very much for coming in and show, sharing this with me. us. Um, I'm going to... Uh, it's, it's only 22, so we've still got a little bit of time to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over to the chat session now so you guys if there's questions that you want to ask me in particular about um, how to do something in the workshop by all means please throw the questions up we've got uh, Peter and John uh, moderators today so obviously the questions have got to be uh, real questions to do with woodwork anything else um, they can you that's all there is to it uh, especially with having Zoe here Oh, one of the other things I've just done, I, you might, might notice on Instagram that I put a post of a whole heap of timber arriving here. I'm about to build a swing set. Now, that might sound a bit lame, but it's not just your ordinary swing set. There's a couple of a, a post and a rail, and that's it. This thing is going to be Art Deco. It has to work in with the fountain that I've built out in the garden. I spent a lot of time designing it. And all of the timber arrived yesterday so that will be the project that i'm going to do during january that'll be a lot of fun i am going to incorporate using the cnc machine with it uh, and i've on that note i've just moved my dust extraction system and i'm doing going to do a small video on that because i've had a few people ask regarding do you keep your dust extractor inside with you or do you put it outside the the pros and cons of each system well in australia the climate isn't too bad so I'm putting mine outside. I do notice even with the really good filters on the dust extractor that we're getting a situation where there you can see a very, very slight haze in the air and beside the machine on the wall when I move the machine out, there was sawdust on the wall as well. Now, that is an indicator to me that I want it outside. And as I say, the filter itself is fine. It's just where the bag connects onto it at the bottom uh, you normally have to fold a bag and every time you fold a bag you're going to get a little bit uh, that it's going to uh, this going to leak no matter how tight you do I put tape over the top of those little areas but you know if you've, if you've got the space and you've got a covered area I think the best thing is to put it outside you're going to lose temperature obviously if uh, if you condition the temperature inside the building hold on a second so I didn't turn that off can you get I'm just going to get Zoe to do some maintenance here. See up on beside the cabinet there? See that switch that's hanging up there? Yeah. Grab that. Grab, pull it off. Okay. Go over there and push the on-off button. Now, the remote over there is going to want to turn on as well. So just aim it straight up. This side, this side, this side, this side. Yep, aim it like that. Thank you. Is that any better on the sound? I forgot to turn the air filter off. Here we have been just prattling on, prattling on. Um, okay. Uh, so, so here's James made a comment. So I just love it. Love wood so much. Uh, Steve, congrats. Keep up the great work. Um, Joe, 108 watching, only 38 likes. Come on. Yeah, yeah, throw up some likes. As I say, throw up the likes. It's the, it's the little button down the bottom below the screen here. Click that and the, click the thumb, uh, the like one. There's Zoe's being a good model here, showing you everyone how, how it's done. And... Uh, and we, where we go greg the sounds all good uh david lucy do you know what the remote switch is for dust extractor etc that looks like a garage door opener not a tv remote i can clip it on my apron 
Um, no, David, I'm not sure of that one. It would be a matter of going to someone like JCAR, I guess, to see what they've got. Um, John Lowry, and looking at a very proud grant. Indeed you are, John. Indeed you are. This is great. This is probably one of the only ones. And, you know, I said to Vicky the other day, hmm, maybe Arthur's tools might be going to Zoe. We'll see. Well, I'm the kind of, I'm the only grandchild who really likes wood tech at the moment. Yeah, but there might be another one comes along after you in the generations that they might do it more. You never can tell. Well, we'll see what happens. See. We'll see what happens. As I say, was I was saying earlier, you know, as you go through life, you're asked what you want to do when you're older. And really, until you're around 20, even 20, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. My father said, you're going to go and get an apprenticeship. That's all there is to it. So that's what I did. All right. Now, I'm going to uh, throw it over to the chat again. And so if you want to hop over there again and uh, enjoy yourself over there, take Thanks that. Thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, and I shall pop this back here rather than looking like I've got a lollipop on a stick. There we go. Uh, it's going to be a little bit daggy because I'm just going to throw that behind there at the moment. All right. Arlex Hill Remote Switch in Australia. Yes, they do. But it's one of those ones that does look like a TV remote. It's around about that long. White. It's got four different individual switches on it. So it's on off with the different ones. So... David's looking for one that's just like a garage door opener. It's just a round disc that hangs off a uh, keychain, and you click it once, click it on, click it off, click it on, click it off. That's all there is to it. Um, Jane, cannot afford a dust extractor, so wait around the sawdust. Yeah, well, if you do that, please wear a dust mask when you're getting into stuff that's going to generate the dust. Every time you walk around as well, you're going to be kicking up dust. That's why I run that room air filter. So after I've finished in here for the day, or even if while I'm in here, I'll set the timer on that for run for another two hours. So it's collecting everything that's still airborne. It's, you know, at my end of, or at my stage of life, I am becoming much more and more aware. I'm realize, realizing now that I'm not bulletproof and that it's, uh, it's you know, health is something that you, you've got to cherish. When you're young, you just take it for granted. Like Zoe, you know, super fit, runs around a netball court all day. It doesn't stress her. Um, when she hits 60, it's going to be a different story. Okay, uh, what do we got here? Uh, Real Ruler 2112, that's an interesting name. Jane, uh, I have a shop vac and a plain baffle on it to collect dust at the machines, then repurpose furnace blower to filter dust out of the air. That's good if you can do that. And as I say, if you're just doing a little bit on the weekend in the garage, that's great. Uh, but if you're doing it a lot more, see now that I've got the CNC running, it's, uh, it's running a fair few hours a week. And I've, got to, I've really got to be careful about what I'm doing, mm. being in here with all of that. Um, can that, what would be the best way to fix where the cutouts are? Uh, not sure what you're talking about there, Ken. I, that, there, was there, there was that the follow on to some other conversation. Uh, Dave, the Arlec worked great, but wanted a smaller control. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Dave. Tim G, there's been some good videos on YouTube lately about dust filtration in workshops. Yes, but it's still, if the, the, the better the filtration, the more expensive it's going to be. Bas that's basically it. Uh, HEPA, they say, is fine. But, you know, do you want to risk it? Oh, look, I'm, I'm happy with the, the HEPA filter that I've got on the shop vac. But that's the filter and everything's enclosed. And that's with uh, Festool's dust extractor. Uh, and that's a different story to the stand-up style of dust extractors that are the bigger ones. As I say, there's areas there, <coughs> pardon me, when you're replacing the bags, it's very hard to get that seal not to leak. It's something you're putting in and out. Where, where with the Festool, it's a closed unit inside. And when you clamp that lid on, that's also a whole lot of uh, seal. So it's... Uh, it's slightly different purposes. I will be getting the um, the separator for the CT26 very soon. You know, this thing that goes on top, uh, which, <clears throat> pardon me, creates the, the cyclone. I don't know if they're actually going to call it a cyclone. Uh, I believe it reduces the suction rate a little bit, possibly by around about 20%, one person was telling me. I'm going to get one up here. I'm going to use it for a month or so before I actually look at doing a review on it because I want to make sure that... I know what I'm talking about when I when I tell you guys about it. So you'll see it in the background every now and then as I'm going along doing other projects. Uh, Ken Wheels read up. Okay, Barry Doxy CNN 
is dust which is more dangerous than planar. Okay, CNC, I'm guessing, not CNN, which is a news broadcast radio station or TV station. Uh, John Luke, David Lucy, a smaller one would be great. Mine is a bit too big. Okay, uh, where are we? Go, I'm going to just slide back up through here, see if I can find Ken's earlier post. Uh, made a drill charging station for my cordless tools, but where I have the cut out to hang the tools, uh, one of the cutout broke. I made it out of pine. Can send you an email. Look, Ken, it would have been a whole lot better. Anytime I make something, and this is something for everyone to, as well, my clamp rack and things like that are going to take a lot of weight. I always make out of plywood. Now, one of the things about this plywood here, you'll see there are a truck road, load truck road, a truck load of laminations in it. This is two sheets of quarter inch ply that have been bonded together. Now, I find that that is a whole lot more stable than just straight out half inch. I'll read, I'll tell you how many laminations are in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's two pieces of five ply for half inch. That's pretty good. So it, it always finishes really stable. I'm just looking at, down the inside of that cut again. That's beautiful. I'm so glad I got that. All right, let me have a look down here. Um, Jane, I wear all the gear and my garage door is open and I'm there every day for three to four hours. I need to look into this. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah, lungs, one set per customer. You know, look after them. Alan, Total Tools have an article on siliconosis and dust extraction and dangers. Good. Stuart, uh, Festool Cyclone Suction diminished on my 26, but no problem with pickup. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, on, a, on a drill charging station, Ken, I'd probably go 12 millimeters. That'll be fine. In Australia, it's going to be half inch. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it, it, look, plywood sizes are a funny thing. If it's a 1200 by, by 2400, it's going to be either 18, 16, 17, or 12, I'm guessing, and 6. If it's a 2440 by 1220, it's an imperial sheet, so it'll go straight away to the imperial fractions, which will be three quarter, half inch, five eighth, and quarter inch. Uh, maybe even three eighths. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, you want to know where the Euro screws are? Look, I've even got a picture because I thought someone might ask me about that today. These are the Euro, Euro screws that I use. Um, so I get those from Nova Kitchen Supplies at Eastern Creek in Australia. So they, you buy them in a box of a thousand. And I do notice that you can get them on eBay from England. And I think they're charging around, you know, a whole lot of money for maybe 50 of them. But for me, I, I, I buy one box. It should last you a life. Uh, but I'm supplying those screws with the Stanton bench that I'm selling out as a kit. And uh, they work quite, quite well. They hold on brilliantly. I'm going to keep reading down the side here. Okay. Went to a, uh, I want to get a better sander. First of all, if you could only have one, which would you choose? If I only could get one sander, I would probably get the new ETS uh, 150, which is their six inch, but it's their brushless motor machine. It's nice and low. It's got a brake on it. So when you turn the sander off, it stops straight away. So you can put it down. Uh, I've Prior to that machine, I would have said the Rotex because the Rotex has got the advantages of very heavy work and, uh, and fine work. Both of those machines are a five millimeter stroke. Uh, the ETS brushless you can get as a five or a three. I am getting one of Festool's new uh, rectangular style cordless or it's a hybrid machine, runs the batteries and also runs off mains. And it's got a two millimeter stroke. Now, all of these machines have different purposes. So, you know, if I could I only got one, I'd go for the ETS brushless five millimeter stroke. Um, John Luke, you're talking about this, the uh, static electricity removal system on a previous video that I've done works great. It's fantastic. I'm doing that on the new system that I've got out there for the CNC as well. And so far it's been working terrific and I'm switching it over to running outside now as well. So hopefully it's all going to be great there. 
Uh, next quick thing, Greg Burchell. Dave, can you tell me where you got a hold of the Euroscrews? Just did that. Matthew D. Jane, it's worth getting a shop vac and dust deputy or something like that time to invest like it. Uh, vac and long hose, it's worth the effort for health and cleanup. Um, oh gee, I've missed a fair few here. Coming back down. Okay, ruler, you said my alias is interesting. I started out as a ruler, but too many forms uh, have somebody using this alias. So I had a 2112 favorite Rush song. Okay, uh, I guess somebody was messing with it. Okay, KC Smith, Izzy Swan showed how effective low cost box fans can be used with good filters to clean the air quickly in wood shops for allergies. Check it out. Yeah, you can do that. Again, nothing like getting rid of the thing at the source, put it outside. That's the way I'm going. The uh, extractor that I've got inside the workshop here, it all vents outside. And that's one of the reasons this place is so clean. Um, with me, when I signed up for YouTube, somebody is already on here with, according to support, the other guy hadn't logged for two years. So you're the real ruler, are you? <laughs> uh, Planty3125, Dave, what do the numbers mean on the box? Okay, on, sorry, I've, I've missed that. Which particular box? Uh, if you could let me know that and I'll get to it. Uh, can, Dave, can you post a link for the Euro screws, please? Um, no, just go on to Nova Kitchen Supplies. Just type in N-O-V-E-R, Kitchen Supplies on the internet and that will bring you up and then just have a look for the Euro screws and the size that I just uh, threw up earlier. Uh, meant to say the number on the box, okay, for the Euro screws. I will do. Um, and, 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 Barry Doxy, thanks for that, Dave. Uh, on the sander, yes. Uh, Dens Bushpig, the Izzy Swan system works. I've built one myself, good. Uh, but you, have you gone in there with a meter to actually measure the, the dust particle count in the air? I know that Derek Lark has just recently done that and he was absolutely surprised. He couldn't see a thing, but there was a truckload of dust that's in the air that you can't see. Uh, let me see. Next thing, uh, Matthew, I need to get out of here for the day. Thanks for the Alec advice. Not a problem. Have a very safe Christmas. I will do. Michael House, great seeing Zoe on the show. Well, there, I'm sure she'll be chuffed to hear that. Must be very proud. I agree Zoe should get a granddaughter bench. Uh, imagine what she could. I'd have to make it a little bit taller. Uh, John Luke, I bought Euro screws at Bunnings. Well, there you go. I'm going to throw this back up again for the Euro screws. And there you go. I'm going to try and read the number. It's 013.15.715. There you go. That'll be a good reason to come back and watch the show again. Come back to this part here. Transition. Uh, Stephen Curry, Dave, my neighbor wouldn't like the dust. Ah, oh, Stephen. <laughs> um, Steve, I, I filter. I, I'm fortunate. I'm on a couple of acres, so I, ha I have that advantage or that privilege, let me say. Now, I've got, uh, I run it through a big cyclone first before I exhaust outside. So I don't have the filter outside on the main system. On the one that I'm going to be putting outside for the CNC, I don't have a cyclone on that. I will be using the one micron filter that's already on the top of the dust extractor. But look, I'm going to drag the extractor in. I'll show you exactly what I mean. <clears throat> won't be long, won't be long. Now I haven't put it outside yet, so I can bring it in and show you uh, what I mean. Now, see just here? See, that is a little bit of dust that's ponding from the bottom of the filter there. And if around the other side, I don't know if you can see, maybe not, I'll pick it up a little bit. Okay, maybe you'll be able to see it up there. You can see where I put tape around where the top of the bag is connected to the filter. There's a little bit of dust here. Might be hard to see it, but it's there. I'm telling you that, you know, it's dust that's there. And around here, there's dust there. The tape was where the fold was, where I put the bag on to stop any dust coming up. And that works okay. But the thing is, every time you change the bag 
Are you going to remember to do that or are you going to be too, in too much of a hurry to do something else? So, I don't know. It's, it's something to consider. Maybe I'm over the top a little bit, but, you know, it, it's your life. You, you choose to do with it what you want. If you want to do this as a hobby or as a living, uh, well, then I'd suggest that you make yourself as safe as possible doing it. Uh, Powermatic and Axiom have new AFS on the market, a bit pricey around $600 here in the States, but they look good. AFS. Explain to me what a, yeah, a, AFS is. Dave has asked the same question. Steve H., uh, I've also found the Euro screws on Amazon in the US. Okay, get that size. If you want to use do my bench and put the um, put these tracks in, I drill a six millimeter hole through the track instead of having the small hole there. And I go down with an eight millimeter drill to create the countersink. The reason I don't use a countersink is because you cannot get a countersink down between the tops of the T-track. So I've done it all, all the research for you. Uh, Brian, can go to Haffel in Sydney as well to get Euro screws. Yes, Haffle, I think they pronounce it. Uh, Jane, okay, everyone, thanks for the advice. It's nearly 1 a.m. Have a great Christmas all. Jane, thank you for staying up so late and watching. Uh, Dan's air filtration system. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ken, can see it around the handles. Yes. Do you want to order Stanton Bench? What is the link? Can you put it down under the show more? I can, John, not a problem at all. Um, they're being made in the States as we speak and they're going to be sent out. A lot of orders will go out prior to Christmas. Barry, do you wear protection when you change the bag? Uh, Barry, I should. And, you know, if I told you I do all the time, I'd be lying. Uh, what I do, is I have done it sometimes, especially when I'm taking it outside and uh, tipping it out in the garden. I dig a hole and I throw it in the garden. I wear the uh, filter then. Uh, Ian, uh, last week's winner. Of course, of course. Here we go. Last week's winner for the G6. Have I got them around? The G6 iMuffs, and these are fantastic. I love these things. Now, if you're the winner, you may end up getting an email from me. Well, you definitely get an email from me. And I will ask you what color you want. So go on to uh, George's website. So this is just type in iMuffs and it'll pop up. And uh, I think all the colors that the G6 are available in. And then get back to me. Tell me what color you want. And then I'll get George to flick them out to you. And the winner with two minutes left to go was James Kosherek. I think that's how you pronounce his name. K-O-S-H-A-R-E-K, -E Kosherek, uh, from the States. So James, thank you very much for entering. And uh, I, I want to see a picture. When I've sent these out to you, or when George has sent them out to you, I want to see a picture of you wearing them in, uh, while, while you're doing something, you know, or if you want to just walk around modeling the, the things, that's fine as well. Uh, now, we have the Triton giveaway for Australia, which is, you know, thank you so much to Triton Australia for supplying that as a, as a giveaway. And uh, that has already started, the link in the description box as well. Jump in there and, you know, I've got a scoop because, you know what, I have another birthday party to go to this afternoon. So he's got, I've got to get Zoe off to a party, one of her year seven parties. She's going to go crazy and go to all these parties in year seven. And uh, my uh, cousin, who actually wrote Blue Healers. So uh, if you haven't watched that movie or that, that series in Australia, uh, you've missed out. But uh, Caroline Stanton is her name and she's turned 70 today. So I'm off to see her for her birthday. Another famous Stanton. Okay, I'm going to have a quick read through here. Congrats, James. Well done. Congrats. Another great show, Dave. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Great week. We'll see you next week. Indeed, I'll be here right the way through. I'm not stopping for any of the days. Uh, Gary Wilkinson, how do I enter the competition? Link in the description box below. So go off a TV and go to a computer or a phone all the way down to where it says show more. Click that and you'll be able to click on the link to enter the competition. Uh, Rob, great show. Paul, thank you. David, uh, John Lowry, Dave, great show. Once again, thank you, Zoe. Uh, please come back, Zoe. John Luke, great show, Dave. Lost Wits, 90 entries so far. That's amazing. Uh, Barry Docks, you have to walk the Thames in a few hours. Wow. All right, so I'm going to get Zoe to come back on. Zoe, come back in, and uh, you can wave goodbye to all the guys out there as well. And uh, 
she says, uh, I don't know what I'm doing this for, Granddad, but I, <laughs> I'll smile if you say I've got it. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much for that. And uh, let me see what we've got here. Intro and text. Here we go. See you next week. Look after yourselves. Be kind to each other and have a great week. Bye. <laughs>